All right, special education exit report. Upcoming reporting for the data team, uh, we have the main schools report, which is due on 7.30. We have the ESEA demographics report, which was open 5.15 and is due on 6.15. End of year reporting, there are varying due dates for those. Uh, behavior and bullying are due at the end of this month on the 30th. And um, the attendance and truancy reports are due on 7.15 um, in July. End of year enrollment exits must be completed by 630. Um, you can't be go beyond that date. So exiting by that date would be uh, uh, the best way to get those all in. Special education exit report. We're going to go into detail on this one today. Uh, this report opened on Saturday and is due on the 30th of, uh, of, of July. So the 30th of July. Graduation reporting, we'll have a webinar on 8.6 for that report. It opens on 8.1. It will be due on 8.30 um, for anyone who is reporting those as well. All right, let's dive right into the special education exit report. Please make sure your microphone is muted. Um, up in the help desk website, we have the data reporting instructions tile. This is going to have all the information that you need on NEO and how to navigate into the NEO report for uh, special education exit. Both the details report and the certification report will be included there. Um, if you need any help navigating that, please feel free to give me a call directly and we can go through some navigation of those resources. All right. So locating report instructions on the MEDEMS help desk, data reporting instructions, there will be a list for special education exit report instructions. The special education exit report is uh, students who have exited special education services during the reporting period, which is July 1st through June 30th. So this is all students throughout the entire school year of 2024. Uh, three 2024. So they all anyone who has exited special ed services must have a special education exit information entered into state synergy. Um, student information must be entered and uploaded, entered or uploaded for each student uh, where they are attending. So the school that the student is attending at is responsible for reporting this information to state synergy. Uh, school administrative units, SAUs, are required to certify the exit data using the special education exit report found in NEO. That is what we're going to go over today. And changes to student information in Synergy will be reflected in the NEO report after the data have been refreshed. NEO refreshes happen um, automatically every hour and a half. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. This, uh, just so everyone is aware, I'm going to say this a couple times throughout this, the reporting period contains all extensions. No additional extensions will be given for this report. So the due date is the due date. There is no going beyond that for this report. All LEAs with publicly funded students are required to report. Here are your important dates to keep in mind. The reporting period is SY2324. That's July 1st through June 30th, 2024. Uh, the open date is 6-1. So it is currently open. You can view this report in NEO. Uh, the due date is 730. So that is the final hard deadline for this report. Um, so let's go. Data entry takes place. Uh, a lot of times you'll have this information in your local student information system, and that information will be pulled from either a report from your local student information system into a report that can be uploaded to Synergy in the state reporting status module, or this information is directly input into state Synergy. Once the information is in state Synergy, then it gets automatically uploaded on the hourly ETL. We usually recommend giving 1.5 hours just to make sure that people, that the data gets pulled. Um, that information will then be reflected in the NEO student data reports. So this information is going to live in NEO student data. All right, let's pause here for a moment. Um, forgot to warn everyone, I have a 
bit of a quiz as we go here. Um, so I'm going to launch a quiz question. Uh, so feel free to um, answer that question to the best of your knowledge. So the question is, if a special education exit code and or date is entered into Synergy incorrectly, how can it be fixed? That question has gone live. Please select your answer. Looks like so far everyone has the correct answer that has responded. All right, so the answer to this poll question, you had four options. One was in the student module in Synergy under special education. That is not going to get, that's not going to happen. Uh, you do not have the ability to go in and change information once it's entered into special education in Synergy. Um, so uploading also will not upload in, or upload or change in, information in the special education module. Only the help desk can update data that is incorrectly entered into special education. So if you have a date that is entered incorrectly into Synergy that needs to be changed, please call the help desk in order to get that updated. Um, if same with um, a service code or um, disability status. All right, close that. All right, I'm going to launch another one here. The hard deadline for this report to be certified is June 30th, July 15th, July 30th, or August 15th. All right, looking from the responses here, we have July 30th is the hard date for getting this report submitted. Uh, please make sure that your microphone remains muted while you are on the call. Um, thank you very much. All right, we're going to finish up this one. How long after a change to special education data in Synergy should the data be in the NEO report? Instantly, 30 minutes, 1.5 hours, or one day? All right, so in NEO reports, this uh, when an update is, happens in Synergy, the data will not be instantaneously into your NEO report. It will take about an hour and a half for it to get there. We run an hourly ETL, uh, but in order for you to see that data, a lot of times it might take more towards the hour and a half uh, for you to see that information reflected in that NEO report. All right, I'm gonna launch another question. If data is missing or incorrect in NEO student reports, where should you look next to make sure the data was reported to the state? NEO student reports manual entry, state synergy, local student information school or information systems such as PowerSchool, Infinite Campus, Tyler Technologies, etc., or MEIS. We're split right down the middle on this one right now. All right, so I'm seeing answers across the board on this one. Um, so NEO does not have a manual entry for student data. Uh, student reports are only generated from Synergy. 
Um, so the place that you would need to go and look to make sure that the information was uploaded to the state would be looking in state synergy. You can look in your local student information system to make sure it's there before you pull a report, but if the information isn't in synergy, it's not going to get pulled up to NEO. So that would be the first place that I would recommend looking if you're not seeing accurate data on your student reports in uh, the NEO report. Go back to Synergy, make sure that it it went up the chain. So it went from your local to your state to, to your Synergy to your local system. Uh, sorry, to your NEO. Um, you'll need to go back, kind of backtrack. So from NEO, go to Synergy, go to your local system. All right, let's see what else we got. One last question, and then we'll move forward. Who certifies the special education report? Superintendent, special education director, data specialist, or commissioner? This report is certified by the special education director. So this is a report that the special education director is responsible for. Um, so the superintendent will not need to certify this. They may want to review it, but they will not be able to certify in NEO unless they have the special education director um, permissions in the NEO system. So special education director will need to certify. All right, let's continue moving forward. Locating the report in NEO, you're gonna to go to NEO, student data, student reports, special education exit report. Once you're logged into NEO, you'll need to navigate to that student data. And if you don't have access to NEO, you'll need to get uh, new credentials for NEO login. Uh, that will need to be, um, a data request or an access request will need to be submitted by your superintendent on your behalf. Uh, and then the help desk will process that so that you can get access to NEO and get into those student reports. If you do not have an active staff assignment in NEO staff, you will need to have someone in your SAU enter that um, data into staff in order for us to process that request. The key to the kingdom right there. So here's some navigation here. We're gonna, in NEO, go to student data, student reports, you get a nice long list of reports. Special education reports are at the bottom. We're going to click into the special education exit certification report, and then you have your details report. The certification report is your aggregate counts of all of your students who have exited services, and your details report is going to go into the students who actually make up those counts. So if they, they seem off, go into the details report. It will tell you who is making up those counts so you can make any changes or adjustments. Your certification report will look like this. And you'll be able to see the count of graduated with a diploma, reached maximum age, dropped out. All of this information will be there. Once again, if you see something that is not looking accurate, you should link into your details report to make sure that those counts are on par with what you're kind of tracking as you're verifying this data. Your details report will list specific students that are identified um, as exiting special education and that will have the code and the date with their um, disability exceptionality uh, listed as well. So you'll be able to see those changes um, of those students here. This report can be searched if you're looking for a particular student um, that, or maybe there's a particular code that seems off. Um, you can export and save this data if you want to verify this information with a special education teacher or something. Um, if you just need to send it back to get a little bit more, a few more eyes on it, this can be exported so that you can do that work. You can also sort by column in order to uh, organize by topic, by disability, by exit reason, by date, if you want to put those in order so that you can verify that information as well. So an important thing to note here is that the enrollment exits in Synergy will exit special education exits um, or will enter special education exits if the code translates over to a special education exit code. 
Uh, so in the enrollment data dictionary and the student exit data dictionary on the Synergy Instructions page of the Help Desk page, huh, lots of pages, um, you can get to this document that will tell you how a, an enrollment exit in this column will impact a special education exit over in this column. Um, so if a student is transferred to a school in a different state, they'll, they'll be exited with a moved and known to be continuing code. Um, if a student is graduated, they will be graduated with diploma. Um, so that will those will show up. These codes, if they are exited correctly from their enrollment, will show up for special education. You should still go in and verify that all of the exit codes are accurate for all of your students. Uh, so just kind of go in. Uh, it, you, this can be done in one fell swoop by an enrollment specialist or a data specialist or someone in your SAU who does that work, uh, but you should still go in and make sure that those exit codes for your special education students are accurate. With that being said, oops, I went the wrong way. A few notes. This report includes students who are no longer receiving education services. So if a student has a change in disability status or a placement change, this will they will not be included on this report. This is only for students who are no longer receiving services, either from aging out, graduating, maybe they um, have exited to regular education. So that's what we're looking at here on this report. That is all I have for you all today. I will give a moment or two for questions here. See, there's some going to check the chat really quick. Make sure we didn't miss any. All right. Yep. Yeah, um, oh, if you don't mind, Ellie, I'll chime in with you sure. know, my usual two cents. Um, so yeah, with um, with the end of year happening and um, you guys trying to get your student enrollment exits in there, um, if you're a special ed director um, or if you're a data specialist, you want to kind of coordinate with the other person um, to make sure that things are happening the way you guys both need them to. Because um, one thing that we see pretty commonly as an issue is um, like Ali, you know, we just went through how the enrollment exits will map automatically to a special ed exit. Um, yes, this screen here. And what will happen is basically that will work the very first time that Synergy sees an enrollment exit. So let's say, you know, they go ahead, you do an upload, you, you know, exit your student, you know, um, transferring to another district. Um, you know, it's going to put that moved known to be continuing exit on their special ed record. And then later on, if you guys go in and go, oh, no, you know what? They actually, they didn't move. They, I don't know why that got in there. And then you change their enrollment exit. It is not going to go back in and change your special ed exit because it just kind of gets set once the first time it sees it. So just be aware of that knowledge. And so, um, yeah, I know it's I know it's tough. You know, you guys aren't exactly looking through your entire list of 200 kids to make sure that every exit is what it should be. But um, just be aware that that's how that happens. And um, if, if it does, you just need to contact us and we can, you know, flip the exit for you. Um, but yeah. Um, the other thing that I did want to on that note, too, is if you guys have kids and we talked about this in the end of year exit webinar, um, if you have kids, say, going from your middle school to your high school or elementary to middle school um, and you're putting their enrollment exit as transferring to another school in the district, I believe that's going to leave their bed record alone. Um, it will. Yep. See. Yes. So that should be fine. Um, but yeah, you might want to just make sure if you have kids going, um, you know, to home instruction and things like that, that is going to exit them to regular education. Um, and that's fine. That's how that's supposed to look. Um, because if they're leaving public school to be 100% homeschooled, you know, they're not eligible for those services any longer anyway. So. And to add further clarification, um, this code is a middle of the school year code. This is not an end of year code. Um, so students who are moving up from 
one school to another, but they're still in your same LEA, your same SAU, it should be this code that is used. This is your end of year code 030502, uh, um, not enrolled, eligible to return. Um, this code will not exit truancies or things like that either. Um, so this is the code, this is not the code that should be used um, for that end of year process. And we did cover that in our other webinar as well. Yes, excellent point. Any questions? And um, I'll, I'll chime in one last little piece here because there's always a lot of confusion about like what exactly this report is doing. Um, it This isn't, you know, if, if a student exits from special ed, essentially we're collecting this information for the federal DOE. This is just something that they want uh, states to report every year is the kids that are um, effectively, you know, done done with their, their special education journey um, for whatever reason. So this is some data um, where we kind of, collect it on mass and we collect all exits but there's basically there's a subset of ones that the feds are interested in um that we're going to be passing off to them in a different list so um you know this doesn't affect you know if a student can get services in the fall or you know any this doesn't affect you guys's funding if they exit it now like this is literally just a, a list of kids that the feds want and so we're just doing this report to get them that list um, and that's all we're doing with it so you don't have to worry about um, too many details with it. Um, Todd, great question. The attending versus responsible district summary. So your attending report would be your students who are attending in your LEA or SAU. Um, and your responsible would be any students that your um, SAU is responsible for, uh, which could include students who are in um, regional programs, uh, attending a special purpose private school, um, who are tuitioned out to another SAU, things like that. You're welcome. All right, it sounds like there are no other questions. If a question does come up as we finish, uh, we do have the MEDEMS help desk that you can go ahead and email at medms.helpdesk at maine.gov. If you would like any help with navigating Synergy, any training opportunities around state reporting, please feel free to reach out to me directly, alexander.cookson at maine.gov. Um, our website um, is maine.gov slash doe slash data dash reporting. Uh, slash collection slash help desk. So bookmark that <laughs> if you get the chance. Uh, if you search MEDMS help desk in the uh, Google search, it will take you to the first option being our help desk. So uh, that's always the easier way to get there. Um, or you can give us a call 207 624 6896. I hope everyone has a great rest of their Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. We do not have another webinar scheduled until August. So um, stay tuned for that graduation report on August 6th, and we will get that webinar information out and posted. Have a great day. Enjoy the end of the school year and see you soon.